he is becoming the greatest president that we have ever had, though, because to me, he is an American nationalist, and he is also a patriot. We have not seen like that emergence in American nationalism and patriotism in a long time. I didn't really see that with, with um, Obama, especially when he also decided to get on, get on the race pimping boat. I didn't see that much with Bush. I didn't really see that much with um, Bill Clinton. But now we have a new element that emerged, and that is American nationalism and patriotism. Yeah, election time's coming. Who you gonna vote for? Yeah, if I was president, I'd get elected on Friday, assassinated on Saturday, buried on Sunday. They go back to work on Monday. If I was president, if I was president. I do not define a patriot as something better than. You know, the police, the military, who really want to defend us. We have the greatest, most powerful military. Imagine you got thousands of people going over to Afghanistan with weapons, with all this stuff, and their mentality is, I can't wait to get some. I can't wait to shoot somebody. I can't wait to kill somebody. I cannot wait so I can have that story, right? Dangerous. That dangerous thing that Trump uses and people like him and they're all right, they fall into it. It goes back to what I mentioned before about dehumanizing. And what I don't like is that they're using that word to create an us, them environment and trying to give, in my opinion, patriotism a new definition that it's not. It's the idea of you know, being unapologetic about American exceptionalism, about American values, about American culture, Western culture, Western civilization. I mean, there's so many things it feels like, you know, you know, and this goes into the culture war that we're, we've been, that we're fighting and what we're trying to fight on. Uh, there feel, it feels like the intelligentsia or the chattering class of America no longer believes in this idea of American exceptionalism or that we actually have this, you know, this is an incredible country with so much to offer. Um, you know, America is great because of her people. And we need to really start having pride. It's, there's we've, there's this idea that having American pride no longer is something that is acceptable. And that's really what it means for me, is being unapologetic about being proud about being American. In my mind, and in the way that my activism has really come of age, I define patriotism as someone who is willing to stand up for their fellow Americans. That's less about a flag or nationalism and more about communities and neighborhoods. Whether or not someone puts up an American flag for me is not indicative of whether they're a patriot. And in some ways, unfortunately today, the flag has come to mean that people are Trump supporters or that they're America firsters. And instead, what I want us to be focusing on, and really what patriotism means to me, is that I am willing to work hard, put my body on the line, and do what I can to protect my neighbors and friends from civil rights violations committed by other people, including white supremacists and Nazis, and people who work at government institutions. So for me, I run Patriot Prayer, and I'm Jesus-centered. I follow Jesus, okay. and Jesus doesn't he doesn't care about what your skin color is. He doesn't care about the labels the world puts on you. He cares about the way that, that, that he made you, the way that God made you, okay? And Nazis are going to dislike someone because of their genetic background. That's called ignorance, and that's stupidity. And so I'm totally against that, and it's just another form of hate, which I'm against all forms of hate. When they say we're gonna make America great again, we need to go back to when America was great. When? Like we can't go back to the 1950s. We can't go back. Do people have this idea of a golden age? 1950. Okay, let's go back to 1950. It was great for you. Who was it not great for? Black people, Mexicans, gays, trans, women, who were still getting lobotomized if they had any type of sexual drive. And the world we live in at any particular time is a product of so many factors. The factors that were extant 
you know, in this golden age of America no longer really exist. Bring back a, a lot of the great things that the country once had. Now, during that time was, was like I said, was there a lot of like, not so positive things that happened such as Jim Crow? Yes, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't great at all, but there were still a lot of great things about, you know, like the family unit and the, the family unit was really great at that time, especially for the black community. Well, it's a great slogan. It's another example of why, you know, his branding ability. Um, Trump is an entrepreneur and a businessman. He is the anti-everything when it comes to what America is supposed to be, but it's all in the name of white superiority, so they'll ride that train till it crashes. I was so proud the day when they signed into law that you could serve openly in the military across the board and transgender, transgenders, people were allowed to serve, oh, LGBT were allowed to serve. And I remember thinking back of when I was in, when I didn't have that right, I didn't have that at all. So I say that because when I heard that, that he was rolling that back, and who knows what else he may roll back as it relates to the military. He may try to go back and, and gay serving openly maybe roll back. I was just quite frankly damn mad. <laughs> like so mad, so hurt, so traumatized. It's not so much a trans ban, it's more of a medical um, transition ban. I mean the reality is you can't tell by looking at someone, before I transitioned you couldn't tell by looking at me that I was trans because it was just like a normal person. normal. You know, guys, just, there's nothing about you that looks obvious. Um, so those people, like, if you don't transition, there's there's trans people that are in the closet right now that have not medically transitioned in the military, and no one will ever know unless they say anything. Trump is using a tactic that has been used for as long as we've been as we have literature. Every every atrocity that you can point to. It always starts with that figure dehumanizing a particular group of people, whatever. I hate to say this, but there's, there are lots of problems with the trans community, and the question is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Our country's president condemned violence on both sides, but an objective viewer of what happened in Charlottesville, and unfortunately what's happening across the country right now, is not that there is violence on both sides. It's that there are Nazis, Confederate romantics, and white supremacists who are coming out and targeting communities of color and others to make them feel unsafe. What is, and, and I've, I've, seen, I've seen articles and I've seen interviews of white, white supremacists that say like, I'll die before I lose my position. And they mean that. They're willing to die. Like they would rather die than be a minority because their fear is if we're the minority, we will be treated the way we treated minorities for forever. I mean, to be honest, I don't really like, you know, um, that segment in the white population that feels like guilty for being white, though I, you should not have to feel any kind of like white guilt or be some kind of like white apologist, you know, is encouraging, you know, everybody else to adopt, you know, identity politics, then why shouldn't whites be uh, awarded the same um, opportunity? Because, um, I mean, I, will, I would have to agree that, you know, that, you know, whites, you know, have always been a part of, you know, Western civilization. I mean, they've been a part of Western civilization, you know, for thousands of years. And the West is the place that um, also did great things such as um, get rid of much, much of the world's uh, slavery. They also contributed to it, like I said, the British were played a huge role in the Atlantic slave trade, so of course the West also has, you know, past sins like all civilizations do, but there's just a lot of great things about the West that are worth being proud of, and the people who have, who have like ancestral t ties to that place dating back thousands of years should also take pride in that. And if you love your country, you can be a patriot. That's you are a patriot if you love your country, but my love isn't unconditional when it comes to this country. I don't have unconditional love for a country who doesn't have unconditional love for everybody. Just being black in a car is probable cause from the searcher shit, just in case you, uh, you didn't know.
people will then argue and say, will say that, well, there's evidence out there that uh, black men are more likely to be uh, brutalized, brutalized at the hands of police than white men or Hispanic men. Well, I have to kind of throw it out there after, you know, like I said, stepping out of my bubble. I found out that at, that black men are just more likely to resist arrest, though. White boys talk reckless, reckless to police officers, reckless. Can be belligerent, can be high off whatever, or reckless. And they'll still do everything in their power before they, before they put him down, right? They might tase him, they might beat him up, but first they'll talk to him like a normal human. They might talk to him like a child, like, hey, it's okay, Jerry, it's okay. We got a call from the neighbors, it's okay, right? Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be lo that'd be a that'd be a beautiful way to um, every um, law enforcement in in uh, incident I've ever had, which I was never involved in anything. I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I was the wrong race at the wrong time. Like I think like less than a percent or maybe one percent of police officers are bad. Because yes, you have some really bad, crooked cops out there just like how you have bad teachers, bad doctors, because I think there are like thousands and thousands of cases where a medical mistake was made and that nearly cost a person's life in the hospital or did cost a person's life in the hospital, but we're not over here claiming doctor brutality. With Donald Trump at the reins, I don't, I don't know if this will happen, but again, I, I didn't think he was gonna win either, so I can't put anything past him. But we're talking him signing bills to where it doesn't restrict the type of equipment that the the police get where they get like military equipment now yeah military like we're talking police the same police who do what they want to with black people yeah now have military grade weapons if today the police can beat me up or kill me without any consequences tomorrow they can do it to someone else when i think of what it means to be an american i think about the ongoing struggle to realize the values that we say we have. It's not fair or accurate to say that everyone enjoys equal protections right now or that everyone is safe right now. That's something that we're working towards. That's, that's, what, that's my type of patriotism where it's like, everybody deserves a fair shake. Colin Kaepernick knelt. I didn't take offense to that at all. No. And I, every veteran, and I don't say that dramatically, every single veteran that I know personally has zero problem with it. Like mm -hmm. I don't really like the, the race hustlers and the race pimps such as the Al Sharptons and the Maxine Waters because they're only just in it for themselves still. Um, Mr. <laughs> Al Sharpton, Reverend Sharpton, whatever you guys wanna, wanna call him, he is trying to racialize uh, the whole NFL issue when Trump, you know, said that, hey, all of those SOBs need to be fired because they are disgraced. They're a disgrace to the American people and to the American flag that they are uh, disrespecting. And so Sharpton tried to make it seem like he was attacking black men since the NFL is 70% um, black men. If you could tell all the non-black people in the world something just about what it's like to be a black American male, huh. like what would you say? Oh God, I don't know, you got enough. Uh, you, you got I enough got some memory. juice in here. Yeah, we're good, we're shit. good. We couldn't change our skin, so how can we walk into a room, we tell ourselves, how do we learn how to walk into a room if we're all surrounded with, with um, Caucasians to make them feel comfortable? so they don't feel threatened. You know, I'm a, I was a big, tall, black man. <laughs> and I didn't want them to think I was gonna be like, uh, you know, so I learned that's not what they like. They don't yeah. like that. They like the nice, quiet smiles. Right, so I'm talking now is usually how I, is usually how I talk. But, um, yeah, you know, so, uh, if I were to talk like this, or came in like this, with, like all these fucking cameras and shit, and this, this mic shit, and, that kind of, that kind of way, right? Um, be a different vibe, be a different feeling, right? My features, the way I speak, the, the, the texture of my hair, my tattoos, my everything, my size, that's a big black guy. In the military, I was the big angry black guy who spoke up for himself. Right. Right, so 
Why were you labeled angry? What what made them think that you were? Because I was angry. Okay. I was angry at the racist comments. I was angry at the some song come on. He was like, "Hey, come! On. I know you know how to do this dance." And I'm mm -hmm. like, "No." But they go, "Hey, I'm going to Popeyes. You want some? <laughs> okay. You mean get you some fried chicken and some grape soda?" I'm like, "Who who are you talking to?" Um, we don't want to hurt you. Really, we don't want any problems. Like how you don't want problems, like when you leave your house, you want to get in your car and go do your little errands and maybe go to work and, you know, come home to your kids. We want the same shit. Like, <laughs> it's just playing the cards you were dealt, you know, and, and, and society's rules, our, our card is, we don't even have a hand, okay? We weren't given a hand. We had to take a hand. We had to find a hand. The, uh, the DNA ancestry test and I got like 65% you know African and 35% European and since you know that's generally speaking how people have viewed me like you know most people have viewed me my entire life I would just say that yeah I would I, I would identify with the mixed race label you can be mixed, but you don't get to just walk around and go, I'm bi I'm multiracial, I'm mixed, I don't identify with anything. <laughs> Society is gonna identify you one way or another. It's just the way people, uh, humans are. Humans have to have boxes because it makes our lives easier. So like, you know, like in Berkeley, I mean, I was taught that, you know, African Americans are victims, white, it's, it's the white man's fault that, that people, that black people are in the position that they're in and I believed that for like my entire life, especially since, yeah, my mom, you know, used to talk to me about, you know, those kinds of things and police officers and, you know, police brutality. My mother is all the way white. Okay. Mother, strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes. Okay. The whole side of my family is white. is white. Okay. But I have never been mistaken for white in my life. But I have always been to my core a black man. Yeah. Not because I one day just decided like, I'm black because at some point, society decided for me, you're black. My interactions with police were always... Like a black man. Like a black man's. Right. When I got arrested, my profile said 6'4", 200-something pounds, black man. Yeah. It didn't say multiracial, maybe he's white, maybe it was black man. Yeah. I got arrested as a black man. I got put in jail as a black man. That's who I was in jail was a black man. Economy in the community isn't really great and everything, but I'd like to still ask is that what's, what presents a, a greater danger to black, to the black community? The breakdown of the family, absentee fathers, or the police? It's a breakdown of the family and absentee fathers because even Obama said that, hey, I mean, if you grow up without a father, you're five times more likely to go down the wrong path in life. And since 72% um, of black children are born to like unwed mothers and don't have a father in their life, kids are going to more likely turn to a life of crime, though. Like, I didn't have my dad in my life at all, though, but I was still fortunate not to turn down, not to turn to a life of crime like that, though. But um, did my dad, um, did the white man tell my dad to um, abandon me? You don't have to subscribe to the, to the traditional ideal of patriot. You don't have to be quiet just for the sake of this is the way it is. It's the way it's always been. You don't have to suppress how you really feel. You don't have to, you know, keep quiet on things that you feel like you really should say. The people who have shaped this country the most are the people who went against what they knew was wrong, but maybe was just accepted as that's the way it is. Civil rights acts, civil rights activists, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, you had the Black Panthers, you had Huey Newton, you had uh, Fred Hampton, you had all these people. You had, I mean, even way back, Rosa Parks. I mean, we're talking, it was the law that black people were less of, of people. They were three-fifths of a human being. That was the law. It wasn't until people started to say, no, that's not right, that that changed. That was patriotic. It's not patriotic to sit and go, no, you're right. We are three-fifths of a human being. No, I'm sorry. So you, you take what you see is wrong and you fix it. That's patriotic.
I did vote for him, but I'm here to wait to see. I want to see results. Okay. And then people ask me, do I support him? Do I support him? I was like, well, I'll tell you in 2020 because I, I don't worship politicians. I want to see results. Okay, I want to see more jobs. I want to see lower taxes, less regulations. If the rich gets richer like it has in the last 20 years and the poor gets poorer, then I'm going to be pissed. The work that I do at CARE is centered around the U.S. Constitution. Day in and day out, I am advocating for constitutional protections for members of my community as well as my fellow Americans. It is indeed how I live out my patriotism. An American, I mean, even though am I, I mean, am I, do I have, am I also African descent? Yes, but I'm an American first, and then I'm black and white and whatever is composed in my, um, ethnic gene pool. I'm not African or um, bloodline descent. I wasn't born in Africa. A white person born in Africa can come to America and get citizenship and that dual citizenship would make them African American. So you're not African American? I'm not African American. Um, I don't know what the fuck I am. I was, can I say fuck? Is that okay? What I was raised to believe is we are Americans now. Forget it. I don't, we, don't, we don't subscribe to the whole thing. We just need to pick up and go back to Africa kind of. We're here. <laughs> we're here now. We're Americans. This is our country. Oh, we helped build this damn country. It's ours, and we're part of it. And we, yes, I'm a patriot because this is my country. You don't necessarily have to give five years of military service, but you have to give something. Because that's the definition of patriotism, too. If you want something from this country, you got to give to this country. I mean, John F. Kennedy was like, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That's the idea of a patriot.